Hello and welcome to the good old days of radio show. It's Thursday. We are doing uh, the I Love a Mystery uh, radio classic uh, series, The Thing That Cried in the Night. Last week I was speaking about why, or speculating on why there are so few episodes of this series available. I looked it up. I'm actually reading, as I'm doing these, a book, which I don't know if it's still available or not, but if it is and you love this show, you should get it. It's called The I Love a Mystery Companion by Martin Grahams Jr., and it was published by Martin Grahams, I guess. That's what it looks like, so I suppose you can find out if this is still available, check online, but it's called, again, The I Love a Mystery Companion by Martin Grahams. And anyway, in this book, he says that there were 1,700 episodes of I Love a Mystery done between the original Hollywood run, which started in the 30s, and the Mutual Network run, which started in the late 40s and finished up in the early 50s. So 1,700 episodes done, apparently all of them transcribed, and yet we have 100 or so, maybe, or less, probably less, definitely less than 100 that exist. That's uh, 1,600 plus that don't, at least we don't know where they are. They, I'm, I, I'm usually of the opinion that they, at least some of them exist somewhere that we don't know about, but um, anyway, they haven't come to light yet. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, we'll see. Um, also reading in this book, uh, there is an Oregon con connection, since we do the show from Grants Pass, Oregon, an Oregon connection to Carlton E. Morse, the writer-producer of the show. Apparently, uh, he was born in Jennings, Louisiana, but at a very young age, family moved themselves to Talent, Oregon, to work on a fruit and dairy ranch. And it says that, I guess during that time, Carlton Morse attended Ashland, Oregon High School. This is 1915. Uh, and then after that, the family moved to the Carmichael District of Sacramento, etc. But um, <laughs> an Oregon connection to this. But there are no transcription discs here in Oregon, except the few I might have, at least that I know of. All right, so we are up to chapters, let's see, 7 and 8. Uh, which would be Tuesday, November 8th, and Wednesday, November 9th of 1949, the mutual run. Um, if you are just coming on board for this, you are seven or so chapters in to a 15-chapter serial, so you're kind of coming in halfway, and I would recommend you go back and start with the Good Old Days of Radio Show first episode featuring this series, which would go back a few weeks, and start there, and don't just pick it up here, because you're going to be kind of lost as to what's going on, But and I don't know that I really want to spend a whole lot of time recapping, because I'm sure there are people that are following this. In any case, the, the quick recap is that there are three sisters in a Hollywood mansion with a domineering mother, a drunken um, brother, and uh, murder and foul play all over the place, and the Jack Packard and uh, Reggie York and Doc Long or what, trying to figure out who did who did murder, who's slashing the one sister, and all of that good stuff. So lots of fun things happening in this show. So here are the episodes from November 8th and November 9th of 1949. Reggie, I swear to my grandma, I ain't never seen a screwier set up than this one. Crying. Juicedly interesting, though, isn't it? You mean all these female women are running around in flimsy wisps of lace wanting to be rescued? <laughs> oh, no, I don't mean female women running around in wisps of lace. <laughs> the thing that bothers me is they ain't no sense to nothing. Well, I imagine things will make plenty of sense once we get on the right track. For instance, what's Jack got us up here patrolling this hall for? But naturally, Doc, after the attempt to kill Hope and Cherry. Yeah, I know, but... Why is he making everybody stay in his own bedroom? Job over in that room pied, Hope across the hall still sleeping off her chloroform, Faye and Cherry in the next room. Uh, how come he let Cherry go in with Faye anyway? Hmm, because her room's up on the third floor, for one thing. Well, so Grandma Martin's. Yet Jax wants, uh, he went and let her go up there alone. I'm trying. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, we're guarding everybody but Grandma. I wonder why that is. Well, I suppose Jack thinks she's not in any danger. 
Just the three girls and Job, huh? Another reason for putting Cherry with Faye? Yeah? She's just recovering from this new attack on her. Ballet brutal, if you ask me, and I don't think she's going to be able to take much more of it. Are you talking about Cherry? Yes, that beastly, strained expression on her face. Desperation. She shouldn't be left alone for a moment until this business is settled, in my opinion. Yeah, well, well what do you suppose Jackson do? I think he's going over the house, room by room. But we already done that, Reggie. Mm, not with any great care. Just made sure there was no one in the house besides those who belong here. Well, what's he expect to find? Well, if someone was in the house long enough to give Hope chloroform and tear Cherry's clothes and slash her, he must have left some clue of his presence. And anybody leave anything around, Jack's the hombre to find no, it. He's quiet. You know, that's the funny thing about Cherry. Of course, it, it was dark in her room, but even if it was, it's kind of queer that she didn't get some idea of the slasher while she was fighting him off. Mm, too terrifying, I suppose. Mind froze on her. Well, anyway, whether it was a man or a woman... I have an idea it was a woman myself. Yeah? I think Jack does, too. Did you see those scratches on her neck and arm? A man's fingernails aren't ordinarily long enough to do that. Hey, I didn't notice that. Hey, Faye's door's open. Cherry, you little fool, come back here. Now, 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 look you, Cherry. You can't come out here. But I've got to. But you look ill. You should be lying down. I'm all right. She insists that she's got to see Joe. I do. I've got to. Now, 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 look you. Jack said that you all got to stay where he put you until he said you could come out. Now, he sent us up here to see that you stayed put. But it's important. Besides, Brother Job's so spifflicated, nothing would make sense to him anyway. I don't care. I love him, and he's in danger. Mm, but he can't be in any immediate danger. We've been right outside his door all the time. Oh, I'm going. Uh, what you think we ought to do, Reggie? Well, look here. Suppose I go hunt up Jack and ask him. Yeah, you do that. But I mustn't no, wait. No, I'll only be a minute or two. When the terrified mouse gets an idea into her head, there isn't much use arguing with her. But it's important. Well, it's going to have to wait until Reggie gets back. Now, look at Cherry. You should get out of them torn clothes. What you still wearing them for? I offered to help her get out of them and put on one of my bathrobes, but try to talk her into anything that makes sense. You ain't sold in them for the winter, are you? I'm afraid to go up to my room to get anything else. I told you you could have something of mine. No, no. Well, what you scared of your room for? It ain't nobody up there now. Maybe there is. Hey, no, there ain't. We give your room a going over. They, they like my room. They can come any time they want to. You mean there's a secret door or something? No, there's no secret door. Then how the heck can they come to your room any time they want to? I don't know. And I'm getting pretty fed up with these they folks. Who are they anyhow? I don't know. Y you know, Faye, she just plain don't make sense. Don't look at me. I'm a stranger here myself. Yeah. Hey, looky, Cherry. Are they the ones who've got the baby that boils every time something's about to happen? I don't know. I think so. That baby gag gets me down. A house full of widows, spinsters, and neurotics. What's a baby doing here? Well, maybe the stork brought it. Oh, don't be silly. There hasn't been a stork seen in this neighborhood since the year of the big freeze. You know, that's darn funny about this house. Here you are, three of the prettiest girls I ever laid eyes on. And there ain't even one of you got a boyfriend. Hope had one, but he's in the corpse department just at present. You mean that chauffeur? Who else? But, well, that ain't no honest-to-goodness boyfriend like you girls should ought to have. Well, you got everything, Faye. What's the matter with you? I'm immune. That ain't normal. So what? So it ain't normal. Maybe I was born in a refrigerator and never thawed out. What about you, Cherry? I've got to talk to Job. Well, you'll just have to wait till Reggie gets back. Ain't you interested in men? Yes. You are? Well, why ain't you got a feller then? They won't let me. Hey, now, look, that ain't no answer. I don't, I don't care who they are. Nobody can keep a girl from having a boyfriend if she wants one. I tell you, they won't let me. Well, why not? They don't want any of us to know a man. They're afraid we'll marry and have children. Terry, what are you talking it's about? It's true. They want the Martin family to end right here. Durned if I don't think you're talking to your hat. Oh, here comes Reggie. Can I go to Job now? Now, hold your horses. Uh, what about it, Reggie? It's all right for her to go in, but first Jack wants her clothes. Hey! Please, Mr. York. Oh, but I say, I, I mean, he positively wants them, wants me to bring them down to him immediately. Well, it's hardly ever done. I mean, just asking a girl for her clothes. Well, if Jack wants them, he's going to get them. Now, uh, go on back in Faye's room, Cherry, and take them off. If I do, then can I see Joe? Yep, so so hurry up. Guess you'll have to put on something of mine. No, I won't. Then how about me going up and getting something for her out of her room? No, you, you can't do that. But Reggie can. Oh, look here. Now, now go on, Reggie. Uh, 
P pajamas and a bathrobe. Anything you can find. Now I'm a ballet ladies' maid, and I resent it. <laughs> okay, get inside and shove things through a crack in the door fast as they come off. All right, here, I'll help you, Cherry. What's the idea, anyway? Probably wants to examine them for clues. Here you are. Okay, a dress. What's he expect to find? Slip. I don't know. Uh-huh, slip. Here are shoes. Shoes. Stockings. Yeah, stockings. All right, here you are. Uh-huh, a top doodad, a bottom doodad. Are that all? Isn't that enough? What do you want, her skin? Oh, did, did you get something, Reggie? There's a whole armful of stuff. She should find something in this. <laughs> yes, she ought to, all right. Here you are, Faye. What? All this? Well, she don't have to put it all on. <laughs> That's good of you. All right, get into some of this junk, Miles. Then you can go and see the good-natured drunk. I'd better take these clothes down to Jack. Or stick around until she goes across to Job's room. Oh, well, where is Jack? Down the library. He's got quite a collection of stuff down there. Such as what? I didn't get much chance to examine it. Things he's picked up around the house. Well... Anyway, you don't look quite so bedraggled now. All right, boys, let's go. Hurry. I've waited too long now. Okay. Come on. Uh, you better come along too, Faye. So you can keep an eye on me? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay now, Cherry. We'll give you five minutes with him. That's all I want. All right, Job, here's a visitor. Hey. Doc, what is it? Well, well where, where the heck is he? He's gone. I knew he was. I knew well, it. Well, why the heck didn't you say so then? How'd he get out? Here's how he got out, opened the window, and slid down the drain pipe. Well, that's great. Jack's going to be mighty proud of yeah, us. But look here. Why, why would he want to do a thing like that for? Silly question number one. What you mean? You didn't think Brother Job would stay put without plenty of liquid refreshment, did you? You mean he sneaked out for a few snores? But he shouldn't have. He must come back right away. He must. Why must he? They'll get him. They'll get him this time. I know they will. Is that what you wanted to tell him? Yes. I wanted to tell him to stay here where you could watch him. They're just waiting, waiting. Reggie, get downstairs and tell Jack what's happened. Right. Don't leave the girls alone for a minute, Doc. Come on, you two. Get back into Faye's room. Come on, Mouse. Why did he go? Because he likes the taste of the stuff. He's breaking Grandma's heart. Well, Grandma broke his spirit. Turnabout's fair play. No, you mustn't say that, Faye. Hey, wait a minute, huh? I want to look in and see if Hope's all right. Uh, you two wait right here by the door so as I can see you all the time. Now, don't neither of you move. Yes, yeah, she's all right. Poor little fella. Keep right on sleeping, honey. She's all right? Yeah, sleeping like a baby. All right, come on back to your room. Say, how much longer you three super sleuths think you're going to keep us undercover? Until Jack says to let you out. Well, I'm getting pretty sick of being a prisoner in my own house. We're just doing it for your own good. It isn't any good locking us up. It ain't, huh? No. When they want to strike... He'll strike whether you're here or not. And what you think we'll be doing all that time? It won't make any difference what you're doing. If you understood, you'd know that. Well, then, why don't you come out and make us understand? You can't. Nobody understands but me. <laughs> She's psychic. I don't know. I just know, that's all. Well, all I got to say is, if you hadn't told us so much as come true already, I'd say you were the screwiest screwball dame I ever did see. You wasn't so little and purty along with him. Hey, here comes Reggie back. He's going to get mighty sick of those stairs if this keeps up. Uh, how about it, Reggie? What's Jack say? Well, he's going out to find Job. While he's gone, he doesn't want us to leave the girls for a second. Oh, stick right with him, huh? Quiet. I'm to go and sit in by Hope's bed and stay right beside her. And I'm to chaperone Faye and Cherry, huh? Quiet. Go in Faye's room with them. Don't let either one of them out of your sight. What about Grandma upstairs? Oh, leave her alone. She won't be bothered. It's the girls that are in danger. Oh, no. Hey, hey, what's the matter? He did it. They did it again. Look. Her shoulder. She's been slashed again. Yes, they did it. They did it. Cherry, Cherry, how did it happen? I don't know. I was just standing here. I felt a sting on my shoulder. She's been slashed, all right. Just like the others. But it isn't possible. We were all standing right here. There isn't anyone else. Yes, there is. They were here. They were here. Cherry, stop it. They slashed me. They slashed me. <laughs>
further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, Transcribed. changing those cold compresses on Job's head. I want to bring him around as quickly as possible. All right. Shall I let his head hang over the foot of the lounge this way? Yes, that'll bring the blood up where he needs it most. Doggone, fella. You must have popped brother Job a whopper. I had to. Well, what happened? Well, the minute you told me he'd escaped from his bedroom and slid down the drain pipe, I dropped everything and went after him. But how'd you know where to look, Jack? Where would you look for a thirsty man? The nearest bar. And he was there? Yes, just getting ready to go on to bigger and better things. And you said, come on back, and he wouldn't come, so you floored him. Something like that. You sure all the girls are locked up in their bedrooms so there's no chance of them getting out? Yeah, and I don't mind saying they resent it. They'll just have to resent. Boy, the things Faye said would have skinned them you. <laughs> Living up to a reputation as the family vulgarian, huh? No fooling. Doggone no, I hated to take that little old cherry girl back up to her room. She didn't want to go so bad. Why'd you insist on it? Because I want each girl locked up separately. Uh, Hope's still unconscious? You're just sleeping now, I think. Seems like Grandma's keeping awful close to her room up on the third floor. She's all right. Jack, you say you want the three girls locked up separately. Why? I want to see what'll happen. You mean if the baby will cry, then one of them gets a business. Yes. But ain't that dangerous? This time, one of them might get killed. How? If they can't get out, how can anyone get into them? You got me, feller. But Cherry insists they can't. It's just like her getting slashed on the shoulder out yonder in the hall when we was all standing right there. Did you have your eyes on Faye all the time? I say. Hey, you mean... I just asked if you had your eyes on Faye all the time. Well, no, of course not. But what would Faye want to go and slash her sister for? And more than that, uh, Cherry said they did it. All right, they did it. But couldn't Faye be one of them? Job, I'd never thought of that. There's a woman in this someplace. Whoever tore her clothes and slashed her up in her room earlier this afternoon was a woman. Mm, you mean those fingernail scratches on her neck and shoulder? Yes, they were narrow and pointed. Faye's nails are like that. Well, most women's are these days. Doggone, but I'm balled up. About what? About everything. You think maybe Faye shot the chauffeur last night, too? She had the opportunity. But she screamed and brought us down when she found him. Why not? Make it look like she was innocent. Yes, yeah, she could have, all right. Yes, but why would she want to? Well, she may have done it to keep her sister, Hope, from becoming involved. Or she may have seen him leaving the front door with Hope's dress in her hands and, believing the worst, killed him on the spot. Yeah, but that didn't mean that she was prowling around the house with a gun in her hand. What'd she want to be doing that for? Well, she knew Hope was out with him. She might have gone to Job's room, got his gun with a silencer, and waited for them to come back. Well, we know the gun that killed him had a silencer, all right. And that gun was Job's. You sure about that? Certainly. How many guns with silencers have you seen in your life? Oh, a couple or three. Which means that guns equipped for silence are about as scarce as hen's teeth. All right, I get your point. Well, if Faye is the one, you going to turn the information over to police? Not yet. I want to know for sure. I talked to the police, and they're sure the chauffeur was a gangster and that he was wiped out by a rival gunman. Let them work on that theory. We'll go on working on this angle. Uh, then, then you think for sure what's going on is an inside job? Well, maybe not entirely, but there's someone working on the inside. Finger for the gang on the outside, huh? Something like that. And, and it's Faye? Well, certainly her skirts aren't any too clean. But why? What's it all about? You know as much as I do, Doc. They may be trying to frighten Grandma Martin into paying blackmail. She knows something about this she's not telling, that's certain. But that's silly. Why'd she bring us in here to clear up this mess and then hold out information on us? 
Afraid to tell us? Trying to protect someone? How do I know? Yeah. Jack. Job's conscious. What's that? Quite. Had his eyes open. Closed them again when he saw me looking at him. All right, Job. Oh, what a head. Can you sit up? I don't know. Well, come on, try it. Oh, say, what'd you hit me for? Because you wanted to argue about coming back, and I didn't have time to argue. It wasn't very friendly. I'm not here to be friendly. You sober? Yeah, I feel terrible. I'm not surprised. I always feel terrible when I'm sober. Like a fish out of water, huh? Look, be a good guy. There's a bottle of brandy in the buffet. Go get it, Reggie. Right on. Job. Well? There isn't a doubt in the world your gun killed the chauffeur. Now, where is it? It's gone. I know it's gone. Where to? I don't know. I looked in my bureau drawer for it. I wasn't there. Why do you keep a gun with a silencer? It was a birthday present from Faye. Hey, a birthday present from Faye? Yes. But why would she give you a present like that? I always thought it would be fun to have one, so she got it. Here you are, Jack. No, I'll just take the bottle. On the other hand, you get one drink. That's all. One drink. Maybe after you've talked a while, you can have another. Here. Is that better? Yeah, a little. Job, did you approve of Hope running around with a family chauffeur? Hope is old enough to vote. Isn't it a fact that your grandmother fired the last four chauffeurs because they were too friendly with Hope? Sure. As the man of the family, what did you think of this? Grandma wears the pants in this family. You had no desire for revenge on them for dragging your sister down to their level? Look, we got a motto in this house. You mind your business and I'll mind mine. So you were willing to look the other way. No matter what happened to your sister. Oh, let me alone, will you? Another thing. Cherry says you and Hope are in grave danger. Oh, she's always talking. But why did she link you and Hope together? Did it have anything to do with her escapade with the chauffeur? I don't know, I tell you. I don't know what Cherry's talking about nine-tenths of the time. You don't think you're in danger? Sure, I'm in danger. Everybody's in danger. You might get hit by a car or anything might happen. No, I mean specific danger. Oh, nuts. You say that, and yet you know that someone tried to chloroform Hope this afternoon. Maybe she tried to commit suicide. How do I know? Well, it's possible. Except that there have been attacks on Cherry, too. Yeah. Somebody scratched her with a pin. Cut. Not a scratch. And it was done with something very sharp. Do you use a safety razor? Yeah, but if you think I'm going around cutting up Cherry with a safety razor blade, you're crazy. I didn't say that. More than that, Cherry was thrown downstairs. And at the same time Hope was chloroformed, she was unconscious and slashed up in her room. Well, nobody's dead, is he? Except the chauffeur, and he doesn't count. Why not? I asked why the chauffeur doesn't count. He's not in the family. He was attached to the family. Okay, he was attached to the family. So what? You know, Job, I'm getting the impression that you're getting a great deal of satisfaction out of that murder. How about another nip? No. You don't like Faye, do you? As a brother likes any sister. That's not answering my question. You don't like her, do you? If she was dead, I'd send flowers to the funeral. Oh, look here. Now. That's an ugly thing to say. Well, you asked me, didn't you? This is the first time we've seen you sober since we arrived. I've got a hunch I'd like to see you and Cherry together when you're in this condition. Uh, what's that for? Well, you object? Look, don't I feel bad enough now without you bringing that terrified mouse down to whisper about the horrible death that's in store for me? Uh-huh. Yes, I think I'd like to see you and Cherry together. Doc. You want me to go get her? No, I want you and Reggie to stay here with Job and keep that bottle away from him till I get back. You hear that, Job, old kid? I won't be gone but a minute. Say, old chap, you know, you'd be a handsome man if you didn't have such an unhealthy pallor. Oh, <laughs> no. How long have you been hitting it up like this? A year, two years, I forget. You like the stuff? In such large quantities, I mean? Oh, now lay off, will you? Fine. Sorry? You don't understand folks like him, Reggie. No? Mm-mm. Folks like him is tickled to death with themselves. That's why they pour it in. Because they like themselves so much they can't stand it. Oh, you're pretty smart, aren't you? They call him the good-natured drunk. But where does his nice disposition go to when he's sober? Look, you two, just leave me alone, will you? Oh, sure, sure. We don't really like to torture dumb animals. Thanks for nothing. What's Packard want to bring Cherry down here for? He has his own reasons. Maybe he wants your little sister to see you when you ain't plastered. Because uh, Cherry told us she loved you a lot. Yeah, I'll bet she did. Yes, she did. We both heard her. First time I knew Cherry had a sense of humor. She didn't say it like she thought it was funny. All right, stop it, will you? 
He's going to bring her down here. Why doesn't he? It's just me, Cherry. Oh. Hello. Who did you think it was? They... They were outside just a minute ago. What's that? Yes, they were. They tried the handle. I saw it moving. And then when they found out it was locked, I heard them whispering. Could you hear what they said? No, just whispering. Men's voices or women's voices? I don't know. Just whispering. You might have been mistaken. No. It was them. They came to get me. Well, I'm here now, so don't worry. I want you to come downstairs to the library with me. Come in my room first? Yes, if you wish. Why did you close the door? Look at me. I am. I'm pretty, aren't I? Very pretty, Cherry. Your face would be beautiful if it wasn't so sad. I'm young. I'm nice. I am, aren't I? I'm sure you are. Then why don't you take me in your arms? Cherry, what is this? Why don't you? Why doesn't anybody? I'm a woman. Yes, I am. If you don't think I am, just give me the chance. Cherry, stop that. Oh. Here, here. You're just all upset. No. Nobody wants me except them. Nobody. They want me. They want me so bad they'll tear down this house to get me. And they will do if somebody doesn't take me first. I can't do it alone. No. No, not while we're here. Oh, Mr. Packard. Mr. Packard, I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. Well, um, the original tapes on this just sort of end. Maybe I should explain this. Um, the original transcription discs were indeed complete when found. They were in the possession of Carlton E. Morse, the writer and producer of the show. Uh, he had them in a barn in his ranch in Northern California. And uh, when author Jim Harmon, a longtime uh, fan of the series, asked Carlton E. Morse about them, they were dug out of his barn and given to Jim Harmon to make transfers of so that uh, others could hear them. Um, Jim Harmon, unfortunately, decided to do some creative editing to save tape. Um, I believe these were originally transferred to reel-to-reel -reel tape. And when he did it, he wanted to cram as many of these 15-minute serials as he could onto a series of reel-to-reel -reel tapes. And the only way to do that was to take a 15-minute program edit out a bit of the opening, a bit of the closing, and uh, make it down to like 12, 13 minutes, and then he could get an extra show on a reel. Now, that all sounds kind of nutty in today's world, but back then when the price of reel-to-reel -reel tape was about $5 a piece, and $5 was actually semi-real money back in the, in the early 60s when this was done, saving tape was something that I guess many people did. It creates all kinds of confusion for those of us now because the original narration uh, recaps are missing. And in some cases, like this particular show, the ending is missing. It just ends. And then it picks up with another one without any introductory material at all there either. I would hope that someday someone can locate the original transcriptions. I have no idea where they are now. I assume the family of Carlton E. Morse donated them somewhere but we can't seem to figure out where they are. But anyway, they need to be redone and uh, transferred from the original discs, complete with openings, uh, recaps, narrations, and closings, and mutual tags, because they do exist on the original transcriptions, but they don't exist on what we have to listen to here. So anyway, one more sad fact about this particular series uh, being so good, yet being so kind of difficult to <laughs> difficult to find and then even when you find them they're still kind of butchered up all right well we'll be back next thursday with uh, two more chapters uh, we'll be up to chapter 11 and chapter 12 it's 15 chapters altogether so we've got two more weeks that will do until next thursday this is john tefteller and the good old days of radio show see you then <laughs>